on the vital elements of the Smart Cities framework. We are privileged to have the experts in several domains related to Smart Cities in this panel. May I now request the chair of the session, Sri Vipin Tyagi, Executive Director CDOT, to kindly take his seat on the desk. May I call the other members, Sri Vivi Singh from the connectivity and spectrum side, Sri J. Narendra Nath representing the security side, and Ms. Margot Daw from the open data side, Sri Neeraj Kataria from the infrastructure side, Sri T. V. Ramachandran from the network agnosticism side, and from the policy and regulation side, we have Sri Rajiv Sinha, and from M2M communication side, we have Sri Sushil Kumar. Now, I hand over the stage to the chair of the session, Mr. Vipin Tyagi, Executive Director CDOT, for further proceedings of the session. It's over to you, sir. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everybody. It's wonderful uh, uh, for me to see you can't get better panel than this, even if you try very hard. Really, really, I mean, you just see, we have wireless advisor here. We have the Mr. Ramachandran. We have Rajiv Sinaji, you know, who, who is the in charge for this whole uh, new technology in DOT. We have the e ETSI here. We have security, uh, DDG security here. We have, uh, you know, Sushil Kumarji here from, you know, all the uh, standardization and the, uh, you know, initiatives in TEC. We also have Mr. Neeraj Kataria, who, who binds all this together, hopefully, and makes a wrong decision. <laughs> <laughs> because consultant's job is to look at your watch and tell you time. So he comes from uh, a wonderful background, but he tells you so subtly and so nicely that you almost fall for it. So that's the beauty. So we have everybody. I mean, I, I was just imagining who else we could have had here. The answer was Honorable Minister of Communication. So I'm here to tell you that he's going to be amongst us and he's uh, uh, going to be landing in uh, some minutes and then he will go through the traffic of uh, Delhi. He's going to be here. Unfortunately, the uh, you know, IAS officers and the uh, you know, senior officials of, of the uh, DOT have to go for a presidential dinner, uh, which uh, invite and then in between there was some uh, you know, secretary's meeting. So people have been in and out, but everybody made it here. It's wonderful to be in such a place and with such a wonderful audience, and I know uh, most of you. Let me begin with the session. Uh, uh, and what we will do is that we will have question and answer, but, you know, we want to generate the real core issues in the end to, uh, to summarize what happened during the day, what are the key issues, and these experts, you know, who are here will actually give their perspective, which is almost national perspective for entire India. And also international, uh, you know, perspective that is available. If any questions, we'll go back to the, the people in the audience. But let me begin, you know, uh, the, the, the questions uh, in no particular order. But uh, the, you know, so uh, I'm just wondering if somebody has to go early and all that, so I do that. But let me begin with the order then in, in which we have Mr. Neeraj Kataria, you know, uh, from the infrastructure, so what are the vital elements of a smart cities, ICT framework point of view? Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful introduction and good evening, everyone. Uh, I think we have been listening to various speakers since morning and I think most of us are aware of the vital sort of components or as they have been defined by MOUD guidelines in terms of smart cities, uh, the, the, the infrastructure elements that they are uh, looking forward to for cities to implement 
and roll out uh, over a period of next two to three years as, as part of the current uh, uh, smart city initiatives. Uh, again, just to summarize, mo many of them uh, fall in the bracket of what we call intelligent traffic management system because transportation in our eGov platform was identified by our citizens as our number one challenge and I think most of us will you know, fully agree with that one. So, so that is definitely a focus area for, for, for all the cities. The flavors are different from city to city. Some, some, some cities, like we heard, Surat has, is starting the public transport, uh, uh, the public transport system, while uh, some, some cities like Bhopal, they are focusing on bike sharing system. Some cities are going for smart cards. So, so the, the, the projects which have been of, of focus in transportation, they vary from city to city, but that's a very central theme. All of us, all of the cities that we are working with are very much focused about, you know, some way of, of putting the systems in place, the technology in place to, to, to sort of improve the life of uh, citizens of the city or the commuters or the visitors in that city to, 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 to uh, sort those out. Uh, another big focus area is, has been sort of, uh, you know, because people, um, and I've been to various such uh, discussion forums and they said, okay, smart city is fine, but about the quality of life and all, you know, it's not just about technology. Where is the green element coming in? How are we, how, how are we ensuring that, you know, the garbage disposal is, 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 is done? The basic infrastructure is a challenge in those, in these cities. How, we, how are we addressing those? So, so again, it's a, it's a, it's a initiative which, which, which seek, which seek to, you know, we are trying to put ICT based solution in our hard infrastructure. We are not really trying to push ICT, but it is ICT for our hard infrastructure so that the needs, the, 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 the congestion that we are seeing in various of those elements can be addressed through the use of technology. So, so idea of technology is not for the sake of technology, but to, but to ensure that we, we kind of uh, decongest our roads through you know, the, the optimized traffic signals or, or the waste management by doing some kind of segregation, some kind of weighing, some kind of, you know, maybe the charging elements coming in, which, which, which help which helps us in, in addressing the need of whether it is uh, garbage plants or whatever we want to put in place. So, so the, the areas that, that are being discussed or are of focus are very basic city infrastructure problems. However, the solutions are not really putting a new lane or creating a new road, but to put technology, put the ICD solutions to help them decongest. So it's like creating a, uh, uh, a virtual extra lane by putting the technology. That's the way uh, the solutions are being envisaged. And uh, as I said, all the sectors which, which we uh, deal with, which are part of the municipality, are, are uh, pretty much the focus areas. And all, all this, in the end, they all tie up with the integrated command and control center, which is the biggest challenge. You know, We have multiple of plethora of our system being, being put in place. And then how do we integrate all of them together into a centralized command and control, which not only will act as, as uh, operation centers for the city, it will be an, it'll be nerve center, and it will be a disaster response kind of system too. And that's where the today's topic is very relevant in terms of standardization, because when we get into that, that integration element of, of, of our, our waste system, of our, our, our SCADA systems, our water management system, uh, our, our city apps, how do we, how do we create those APIs, how do we create those use cases which can cut across the various solutions that I've put in place, whether it is smart poles, whether it is, you know, my Wi-Fi systems or whether it is my traffic management system. So that's the kind of uh, a flavor of this project which are happening and all of them end up being with an uh, integrated command and control center, which, uh, which uh, 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 is, is the focus area uh, for all the cities in the, in the end too. I think, uh, yeah, great. Yeah. I think very, very, uh, you know, good point that technology is only enabler to solve the problem. And, uh, you know, so now comes the second issue. We have been actually listening right from the morning that we need to have horizontal platform. We need to connect almost everything. But there are serious security issues, uh, you know, that have been talked right from the morning again. But, uh, you know, how important, uh, Mr. Narendra, you think, is the security for M2M? Uh, in the smart cities, uh, from the smart city perspective, what are the unique challenges that we see uh, around, you know, and what need to be taken care of? Thanks. You know, when we talk of ICT, 
uh, we talk of security. So, <laughs> so security is there, already there. So the CIA that we talk of in, uh, you know, when you talk of security, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability is, is a challenge uh, there in ICT, and it is a challenge there in M2M also. Uh, the only thing in M2M is that it is a bigger challenge there because of the uh, disparate and uh, the wide variety of uh, systems that are put in place across wide geographical areas, across wide uh, different uh, verticals that are there, and uh, and the different types of systems that are used. So that is uh, a big challenge. And uh, one of the things that comes out is you know all these devices that are deployed, bulk of the devices have very small footprints. And uh, what are the type of security solutions that would be built into those as a challenge? Because how much can you put into it? And the other is when you talk in terms of large-scale deployments and then trying to ma make it more economical, uh, that is one of the things that we, you know, we have fear is that security is one of the issues that will get compromised to make the device uh, economical or cheap. So uh, these are, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the things that uh, you know we look at, and because of the plethora of devices that are there, the issue of you know recognizing those devices, the identity management issues that are there, the authentication issues, the authorization issues that are there, uh, and because of the different applications that are there, the different standards if you that you know that get deployed, how does it you know across platforms, how does it happen across different applications, different types of uh, device and different applications, how do you use common types of protocols for you know identity management and authorization and authentication is an issue. So, you know, one of the good things that is coming out is this uh, common services layer in which we have serves security as a service uh, that is being provided. And that really gives you a lot of breathing space to the people who are developing applications that, uh, you know, uh, that security issues are being taken care of through the common services layer. I think uh, there are multiple challenges, but the, I think if you adopt a standards-based approach and, uh, you know, adopt security as a service in the common service layer, I think that should be to a large extent addressed uh, a lot of the issues that uh, we face. Great. Uh, indeed, the variety is going to grow. Uh, and if you are going to have, you know, less than 7 billion people and more than 70 billion devices, the variety is going to be more than human beings. So you can imagine, you know, what will happen. And all these devices are flowing uh, in, the, in the water. They are all going in the air. They are everywhere. Only ubiquitous security is what we are talking about. So very well put. And, and not only that, I think we have this... Uh, no, one thing is when we talk of mo most ICD systems, it's like, you know, the, all the control systems and all of those are coming into the public domain now. When we talk of power systems, are all they are isolated systems. But now we have, you know, the physical elements are going to be affected through the M2M, and you have risk and safety issues that would come up if you, uh, the security is compromised. And that's a challenge here. That was not there earlier. There, you know, we earlier used to talk of power plants or critical infrastructure being affected and society getting affected. Now we'll have all of these in our homes getting affected and you have safety issues that come up. Uh, so that brings me to the, you know, another, uh, you know, very important aspect of new technology introduction in India. And it has always been challenged. Uh, but we have very dynamic uh, DDG uh, in, in front of us and Mr. Rajiv Sinha who has been actually doing a lot of things which are different. Uh, so my question to you is that what are the policy challenges uh, and changes which are required uh, and how uh, DOT can actually support an implementation of smart cities? Thank you, Mr. Vipin Tyagiji. We are engaged with uh, M2M communications for the last two, three years. And uh, if we talk about smart cities uh, and the M2M communication perspective in smart cities, we don't have any uh, suggestions or guidelines on any vertical specific because we want to have a holistic solution for all sectors put together because we need to have a system which is a structured, a, a system which is working on uh, standards. I think the topic itself, the theme of this conference is to build smart cities on standard-based approach. 
DOT is working actively on uh, creating a enabling provisions for M2M ecosystem across all sectors, which includes uh, smart cities as well. We have taken some proactive actions for creating those uh, guidelines or uh, soft touch regulations for M2M communications. The work, I, the work is in progress. I'll just mention few. Uh, we got this uh, national, uh, the, the M2M numbering scheme for SIM-based devices finalized. It will be a 13-digit numbering scheme, which will run in parallel with the 10-digit uh, mobile numbering scheme. We will announce uh, when this migration will happen so that the existing 10-digit M2M SIMs will be asked to migrate to 13-digit numbering scheme. Enough numbers will be there to take care of uh, SIM-based M2M devices. We also have uh, drafted uh, guidelines for KYC for SIM-based M2M devices. It is only for SIM-based M2M devices. It will be mainly focused on uh, sort of a bulk customer type of KYC. These guidelines are under active consideration of Ministry of Home Affairs. So as and when we get any clearance from them, we'll be able to issue the necessary guidelines. We started the process of having an M2M service providers registration process in place. We did that last year in June 2016. There was a very good response from all the stakeholders. Stakeholders means maybe from all industries, telecom service providers, automobile associations. Whoever was involved, they are part of our consultative committee in DOT. So we got a good response on our draft uh, registration process. We have worked upon it, we have improved upon it. Uh, but in meanwhile, TRI has come out with the consultation in October 2016, which also included a reference to M2M registration process. So to that extent, we have taken a back seat for some while. We are awaiting TRI recommendations. Those recommendations will also be coming on the need for any additional spectrum requirement for M2M communications. Roaming issues, which are going to be very relevant. International roaming, whether it will be permanent roaming or Indian sims will be allowed. And then quality of service on M2M communications, which is going to be a very important factor. Our existing uh, licensees, they are taking care of uh, all quality of service experts for their telecom network. But there will be new players in M2M service, M2M uh, ecosystem. So we need to have some sort of quality of service. We leave it to try what suggestions they are going to come because they are, they can on their own come out with quality of service directions. So I just want to mention one a very important aspect of privacy, data ownership. Who is going to control the data, who is, how the data will be shared. So these privacy, data ownership, these are very, very important issues on M2M communications for IoT. The existing provisions, what we have in India is the IT Act of 2000 and rules frame under therein. We have to see whether these are sufficient or they need some changes in that with respect to M2M and IoT. The interoperability issue, I think it must have been discussed in the morning session. It is very important because if we are going for a standard-based approach, the interoperability, interoperability and uh, seamless integration will be taken care of. Another important aspect will be the skilling of the people. We have to have a skilled manpower to manage all these type of new services which are going to be rolled out. We cannot leave it to the 
system integrator on their own because whoever is going to own the service, maybe the municipal authorities, city authorities, city planners, they need to have a skill set of their own to manage the services. I can assure that uh, DOT has taken a proactive ac action on M2M. International scenario, if we see, there have been consultations on how to come with the M2M policies and all that, but there are still consultations. No further activity on these, uh, some regulatory issues or uh, things like that have happened. So at least India has taken a lead to that extent. And uh, I think in, by the end of this year, we'll be able to come out with some guidelines, some mechanism on M2M communications. Thank you. Excellent. I think, you know, this is wonderful how proactive the, uh, you know, our DDG security has been. He has already addressed all the issues which are, will come in our, DD, okay, DDG NT, I'm sorry, and also DDG security. They have already taken care uh, of most of the issues which will come on the way of, uh, you know, M2M. But I think one issue which has been flagged just now by Rajiv ji is the data, privacy and data security. So, Margo, you have a European ex you know, experience in this. The smart uh, city implementation will bring about a lot of data, and this data will be shared by various applications. Various applications can be provided by multiple people, and this is a public data. So, are there any privacy issues? What is the European perspective on this, and how it should be handled? in the you know, M2M kind of a scenario. Thank you very much. Indeed, I was afraid that Rajiv would uh, steal my line. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, uh, I was asked to present the, the way we deal with these issues. We heard about this uh, since this morning. And the fact that uh, there is indeed a, a, a technical dimension in all these issues of data with the interoperability, semantic interoperability. I don't know, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, uh, interoperability of data and metadata, et cetera, because it's all about creating a data economy and M2M, IoT, 1M2M, et cetera, is very much looks forward to creating a uh, data economy. Um, here we see a first, if I may say, a first tension, which is not only a standard tension, of course, but it's a tension between, between monetization of the data by some players and, and the need and, and all that we've been talking about since this morning is about providing to a large extent public services, etc. And there is a, there might be some kind of clash at some point between the, uh, the, uh, the cities and the, the municipalities and the, uh, the, 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 the country or the national uh, uh, ambition to provide some services to citizens and the fact that this data is going to be monetized, then the question of what is open data, for example, I was discussing with Christophe this morning when coming, Christophe Collinet from Bordeaux. In Bordeaux, they, the city releases data sets from the city uh, um, to for application developers. Uh, um, but then, then the utilities are not keen once they have this data set, et cetera, in the meters to release their data of the meters. So here you see a first clash, which, which is not, a t it's, it might be a clash at some point between a technical uh, uh, ambition to have this interoperable, but also business models, etc., that might that might um, um, be in tension, if not clash. I think this is the first thing. Now, the second uh, thing I would like to highlight this morning, um, Orindam was uh, talking about a car, which is connected, and in the car he said all those sensors because. The traffic uh, um, and the routing has to know where you're going. The police has to know if you're doing it right. Your insurance company has to know if you, <laughs> if you are if you are driving safe. The uh, the uh, the manufacturer of the car needs to know if there needs to be some maintenance. So is the tire manufacturer of your cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at some point, you feel, provided there is a driver in this car indeed, because after all, it might be an autonomous driving car, but provided you're the driver, you feel you're kind of a target for a lot of data, uh, um, um, how can I say, pulling from you. And, and uh, then the question comes indeed of the, of the data privacy and trust and the, 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 the key question, which is, is it safe? As a user, is it safe? What kind of data am I, do, am I giving? 
what kind of data am I uh, allowing and who am I allowing to, to try and take from me and what for? So um, I know um, I was asked to talk about open data, but this, this issue of openness is, is too, too tricky to, to get in because open, we know that in standards when we start discussing open standards and we always have. So I'm, I'm going to stick to, to what, the way we do it in Europe. Um, in Europe, the uh, privacy and the protection of personal data is a, a fundamental right. It's, uh, it's even embedded in the Charter of Fundamental Rights that all the member states of Europe have to sign and have signed. And personal data in that case is defined as any personal information we can be used to identify you directly or indirectly, such as your name, your telephone number, your email address, your place, your date of birth, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, So in addition to the business issue that I was highlighting first, so standards, technology, business, and now there is this regulation issue. Europe has uh, taken in 2015 a general data protection regulation, which will be apply, applicable from 2018 uh, for all companies that do business in Europe or with Europe, all companies. It creates quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of discussion because uh, there are many, uh, many, many obligations. Um, on the um, data processors, which are actually the people, so there is not, like it was evoked in India, might a third party which might collect the data and check. We, d we were discussing this a few hours ago. A data controller is an entity, whether public or private, which is responsible for processing personal data, for example, medical practitioner, company, sports club, public administration, and so forth and so on. So basically, anyone who can collect your data is called a data controller. And the data controller has to make sure that the data is, uh, you get, they get the explicit and informed consent of users. That's the first um, um, criteria, absolutely. Now, one can ask what is the explicit and informed consumer, and one can immediately see that there is a question of, if I may say, digital literacy behind. Enfin, explicit and informed consent. The second thing is that the data has to be collected for a specified, explicit, and legitimate purpose. Specified, explicit, and legitimate purpose. You cannot do a blanket sucking of the data. You have to say why, what for, for how long, etc., etc. Yes. The third thing is that each and every individual has to have access to its own data and the possibility to transfer it. This is the portability, um, the portability dimension. There again, you immediately see that there is a question of digital literacy behind, but so is the principle. It has to be uh, portable from one cloud to another, from one platform to another. Now, um, the, for the data processor, they have to make sure that the data is secure. I'm sorry, Mr. Nat uh, had to leave because I, I, I felt like courageously handing over to him right now. The data is to be secured uh, in its collection, its transfer, and its storage in a documented manner, in a documented manner. And uh, the data processors, whatever they are, have the obligation to report any data, br data breaches to the national uh, data protection authorities which have been created. And by the way, in many of the companies, there is now a new function which is data protection um, DPO, data protection uh, officer. Thank you very much, Louise. Um, so this is sort of this new job which is tasked to implement and enforce all these things. The, in the member states, so you know Europe, Europe, 28 member states, in each and every member state, there is this data protection authority which not only will have the right and the obligation to enforce this, but also which will, which will be able to, uh, um, how, do, how do you call this, poursuivre, um, which will be able to, well, it'll be, basically they'll be able to find companies that don't abide up to 4% uh, of the uh, annual turnover. Which, so it's quite, a, it's quite a large stick that is provided to the data protection authorities. Now, um, this GDPR, which is really the, headlines I'm giving you, as I said, was a, applying to all data processed, also abroad, for companies that do business with Europe or in Europe. And I know this creates, I, I don't wish to expand on this because I don't think this is the place and time, but I know this creates quite a lot of tension in the dialogues between Europe and India because of the amount and flow of data which is going from one continent to the other. But this is something that maybe we should be uh, looking at more closely. 
And to complete this arsenal, uh, Europe is actually uh, looking at a e-privacy regulation, which is, as you can imagine, creating another tension because the I idea of a policy making authority or regulator between what, what is privacy and the idea of the business and the lobbies of what should be privacy is not exactly the same. So there's quite a lot of discussions on this these days. And this will be solved in principle in 2018 because these are some fundamental pillars of what we call in Europe the digital single market, which is more or less all the policies you have in India similar to what's, what's existing in India. Thank you. Great, I think you know, we need to have much more cooperation to understand this issue. And uh, collection of data is going to be there, but how we are going to control is what we need to also learn and, and put in the policies wherever it comes about. That's what is coming out of this. Now, uh, the second question that uh, came about from Mr. Rajiv Sinha's comment was spectrum. And uh, that brings me to the most important person in DOT from a spectrum perspective, my good friend, you know, wireless advisor, uh, Mr. V.V. Singh. Uh, but the question is that, you know, what demand would be imposed on the implementation of a smart cities with respect to connectivity of this end spectrum? How do we are going to uh, actually uh, deal with this in DOT? Uh, thank you, H Group Director C. Dot, Mr. Tyagi Sir, for uh, organizing the workshop and uh, through you to your telecom engineers in the C. Dot. Very good uh, workshop, very timely workshop. On top of that, very informed uh, and uh, I should say. Uh, informative uh, presentations by the speakers and presenters before. Regarding your first question, how am I going to deal with uh, a spectrum requirement of uh, smart cities, you said, or uh, IoT or uh, all put together? As of now, my knowledge of things against that there are only very limited applications which operate in the exclusive band. Their market share is virtually very, very limited. And if you go by the number of such applications which you call under smart cities or IoT or M2M, they have been deployed in the terminology of ITUR, it is ISM bands. In the terminology of WPC wing, it is in the D-licensed band. So far, nobody has approached DOT regarding more spectrum for such applications as M2M or IoT or smart cities. Nevertheless, in certain context, I happen to see that TRI has done some kind of uh, consultation or survey. And I mean, in those surveys, some stakeholders suggested that the time is yet to come for more spectrum. Some have demanded that, OK, it should be made available for more spectrum. By and large, putting together a spectrum for, technically speaking, but rather spectrum-wise speaking, we call it a spectrum in the D-licensed band. Applications is not the concern. We are going to make available spectrum for D-licensed band. Only certain technical uh, limitations like power or bandwidth or this and that. So to answer your question <coughs> is that there is no shortage of a spectrum as of now. No further demand has been made by the industry as of now. And whenever it will be made available, or whenever the demand will be put up by the industry, we shall look into it very seriously. That is the first part. And my request to the industry that a spectrum in the d license band is not the same across the world. Some part of the spectrum will be free in country X, some other part of the spectrum will be free in country Y, and some is other part in spect uh, spectrum band Z. We happen to get request that kindly allow me to import equipments which is operating in the d license band in country X which does not happen to be the D-license band in India. And this problem is fairly common. People from 
advanced countries import equipments even in the GSM band because GSM band happens to be free. I mean, Indian GSM happens to be ISM band in certain other countries. So developers of uh, IoT-like uh, systems, network services, my request to them would be please look into what we call National Frequency Allocation Plan. That is a very fundamental document on a spectrum. Please look into that and whatever you plan, your planning should take that document into account as far as the spectrum part is concerned. With that, thank you once again to the audience and to the Executive Director CDOT. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, now, uh, I, I think the, when it, whenever it comes to the uh, you know, spectrum, I always remember Mr. Ramchandran who has been you know, instrumental in many auctions which have happened and TSP side interaction that have happened for a very long time. So I, uh, my question is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the point of view of uh, service provider and what policy changes might be required at this point in time in terms of M2M rollouts, uh, especially in the smart cities? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Tyagi. Great pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you, my co-panelists. Um, question which you have posed, Mr. Tyagi, unfortunately, it should have been posed to me in my earlier avatar. I am not a service provider now, and uh, I have a disclaimer also on the spectrum. I am not guilty of any bad acts on spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> so the, but uh, yeah. having in a lighter vein, uh, what uh, Mr. Singh said is very right. There have been no demand from people. Uh, I have one big lament. Uh, it has been a great day today, wonderful workshop, great presentations. Uh, it's been great learning. Uh, what hit me with full force is that here is a big opportunity for India. And sometimes in the past we have been thinking small. I'm reminded of uh, the Silicon Valley thinking, what they call 10x thinking there. 10x thinking is you think 10 times, I'll do 10 times better than what Mr. Tyagi does, what Mr. X does. That's the scale of challenge they take and that's what they achieve. You see what was shown today by Mr. Bipin on China, mind-boggling. And uh, we need to think on those lines, I think. And we are capable of doing it. We have seen the sort of things which have already been initiated in India. I think we have to think on those lines. Then probably people will start knocking on the doors of WPC for board spectrum. <laughs> uh, that, uh, I think uh, the fact is there is no spectrum shortage. There is enough available. We have to just tap it. Um, my, this thing is also that um, I would like to state, I thought I was supposed to say a few words on network ag oh, agnosticism. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a very nice word which I've heard from my school days, uh, but in a different context. It's much used and abused word. In those days, agnostic only meant a person who, who neither believed in God nor said uh, that, uh, that there is no God. He just said, I don't care whether God is there or not there. I'm an agnostic. I know some actors and all famous in uh, South India who claimed they were, Kamal Hassan was, for example, an agnostic. He said, I just don't care. I don't know. I don't think he is there. If he's there or not there, it doesn't matter. Similarly, in uh, network agnosticism, here in IT, it means s something very, very similar. People tend to say it means different. No, it does not. In network agnosticism, if you truly implement it, you just don't care what is the bottom network. It may be a, a, it may be a HFC, an XPON, a FTTX, it may be cellular, it may be whatever. They just, all of them need to work. And that is essential today if you want to talk a successful IoT and smart cities program because you have to change your mindset to thinking from limited number of human beings to billions and billions of devices. And that means there is tremendous heterogeneity. You've got to deal with the inclusivity of all types of technologies and networks, but you have to find a standardized way of dealing with them, hence the importance of standards. And there, we have to recognize the fact that with such a situation, all technologies will have to learn to work with each other. We can't just say, it will be a only cellular network or it will only be a uh, GPON network or XPON network. 
So that has to happen. And unless that is done here in India too, I don't think we'll be able to succeed. It has started off that way, I think. I think that, that's a way to go, and I would like to emphasize on that. And why has this happened today? I would say because partly the with period of time, after all, everything is about the internet. Internet has been the most successful, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, it's a, a phenomenon that the, country, the world has ever experienced. But today we are not seeing the internet which we saw a few years ago, which was simpler, more transparent, more open. Today we've got hundreds of challenges in the internet. That's why you talk about security on the internet, you talk about firewalls, you talk about X, Y, Z. Things are becoming much more complicated on the internet. So we have to adapt our thinking also to suit that aspect. And I'm glad Rajivji mentioned about the 13 digit because with the type of networks we now have, heterogeneity networks, and with the complexity of the internet, where you, you have only confounded things by bringing in aspects of net neutrality. Net neutrality was never a problem. But just a few people talking about it have made it a big problem for everybody. So now in that complex situation, we have to learn to deal with it and with the number of devices we're talking about, a 13-digit thing is a no-brainer. We have to have that. And we have to find a way of mag migrating to that seamlessly. So that's going to be a challenge which we need to uh, address as we go along. And how the two can work together at the same time is also going to be a factor which we all need to address. The, again, he also referred to QS. Existing telcos have got, uh, found a way of dealing with QoS. You may not agree. As a consumer, you may say, no, no, they're not doing a good job. But yes, for a country of this magnitude and with the challenges on, no offense, man, challenges on spectrum given to operators, with nevertheless an inability to put up towers, both are uh, self-enforcing. Uh, In that situation, they've managed to do a fairly reasonable job. Now, you're going to have to have a tremendous QoS issue when you come to the area of M2M. How do you, some questions were asked today morning by Mr. Vijay Madan, I think in the afternoon. So I, it's not at all an easy thing to handle. And we're going to have to find answers to that. We have to have to find answers for the transport layer that will have to be designed. Because all this data, she talked about humongous volume of data, privacy and security. Ultimately, who's going to transport it? How are you going to transport it? What will be the safety devices on that? How are the carriers going to deal with it? So it's, these are all lots of questions to be answered. I think uh, in India we are poised for exciting times. I think a huge potential is there. India can really be, for, for I think we can be at the front of things because we are already trying to be at the front of things on 5G. 5G, IoT, smart cities all go together. I think for me they're all one animal. And we have to ha learn to handle that together. That's my simple submission. Sir. Great. I think it is wonderful. I, all, I am also told that in five minutes or so, Honorable Minister is going to be here. And I would like to particularly welcome, uh, you know, member services who just joined us. So, you know, <laughs> let's all clap for him. Because in spite of very, very hard pressing engagement, he has uh, made it to all of us. Sir, uh, when Honorable Minister come, we'll continue with that session, but let me conclude this session very quickly. Uh, so, you know, last question is uh, from Mr. Sushil Kumar. Uh, he is, uh, you know, TC has been probably one of the single catalysts in terms of having manufacturing in India, having all the quality that has gone in networks to be of a particular uh, quality. Now, the, uh, with the, all this M2M and things like that coming around you know, and the smart cities coming around, what do you see TEC has to do and what you're doing now? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this, uh, we have listened a lot uh, from the morning. As uh, there will be around 50 billion connected devices globally by 2020, India may have around 2.8 billion devices by 2020. And uh, uh, 24, uh, 24 billion device, uh, 2.8 billion devices by 2020 and 8 billion devices by 2026. And uh, as per Cisco IBSD reports, only 17% will be the tablet or uh, uh, the smartphones and reven remaining 83% uh, 
will be the conventional devices. As far as the connectivity is concerned, earlier we used to think that every device will be connected on SIM, but in Mobile World Congress 2016, uh, this Ericsson has projected that only 2% of the devices will be connected on SIM, and remaining 98% will be on other uh, 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 other uh, wireless co connectivities like low power wireless or LP WAN. India is having only the 2 megahertz spectrum in ISM band and most of the countries they are having more than 10 megahertz spectrum which are the developing countries like in European or US or Korea. Uh, like in the uh, LP WAN we will be having the LoRa, Sigfox and the NB-IoT. NB-IoT will be developed on LTE network that will be on uh, release 13 and beyond of 3GPP. As far as uh, these uh, standards, uh, there is a lot of challenges. Uh, the ITU and Cisco has released a document in 2016 which has mentioned the uh, emerging challenges which are the interoperability, low power uh, consumption of the devices, uh, this uh, uh, and uh, IPv6, cross-border data localization, security, privacy, and so many others. There is a number of standardization bodies across the globe, uh, and TC is work, uh, studying their documents, coordinating with ITU and 1M2M. Uh, this we are having standardization bodies, 1M2M, ITU, AIOTI, Alliance for Internet of Things Innovation, which has come up in Europe and European Union is uh, funding this organization and it is expected that it will generate so much of revenue for the Europe by 2020 that the losses of the European countries will be made over. Uh, then we are having ISO, IEC, Continua Health Alliance, Unite, United for Smart Sustainable Cities. That is the document has been created by ITU and 16 United Nations bodies. Uh, in TEC, we have created 11 multi-stakeholder working groups in the last three years. And uh, uh, the, these working groups are having members from all the stakeholders, including telecom service provider, vertical industries, uh, software companies, MNCs, and other standardization bodies. Uh, we released 10 uh, technical reports. And based on the way forward and challenges of these reports, a number of actionable points have been created. These actionable points are like the numbering scheme for the M2M devices, uh, then uh, the spectrum for low power wireless, M2M same, IPv6, etc. And the, uh, the guidelines for this have been created. And uh, I would like to mention that our previous secretary, Mr. J.S. Deepak, has mentioned in most of the conferences the th he flagged three points like the numbering scheme for M2M, M embedded SIM, and the low spectrum for low power wireless. And TEC has created the document on all the th these three, and uh, uh, this 13-digit uh, uh, numbering scheme has already been approved by DOT, and uh, it has been sent to telecom service provider for implementation. Embedded SIM IR has already been created, and uh, uh, Third one is the low power wireless spectrum. This document was cre already created in 2015. It was released and it was sent to DOT for further action. Uh, I think TRI has uh, done a consultation and so many vertical industries has forwarded this document to TRI for consideration. In that 12 megahertz spectrum has been recommended and it has been mentioned that the, uh, this uh, spectrum band may be mentioned because the device which will be manufactured, it will be for a period of 15 years. And as and when the spectrum will be required, it may be released. Uh, not necessarily the entire spectrum should be released now. Whenever there is a congestion, it may be released. And further, the multi-protocol gateways. And uh, in, uh, uh, in M2M gateway and architecture, we are already having a study group for a study of 1M2M standards, device identification, addressing, and naming schemes. And uh, uh, this multi-protocol gateways, IR, is also being prepared. Uh, as far as the semantics and ontology is concerned, the smart city documents are expected to come uh, in near future.
we have studied the communication technologies in low power wireless lp wan cellular and uh, we are expected to release this document very soon and it will also have the details of the spectrum available in various countries and uh, uh, and the technologies which are uh, which may be available for the uh, smart cities which may be used in smart cities so uh, these things are going on in tec with the help of uh, so many our working group members and uh, uh, i am really thankful to the members from the industries and the tsps uh, who contribute their valuable time uh, in consultation uh, with us and uh, we uh, and for preparing the reports and releasing them thank you thank you very much excellent i think you know uh, the good preparation is going on only thing i wanted to clarify is that there are a lot of forums have been made there are a lot of industry groups have been made for different part of the overall problem so some are there in the wireless connectivity of sensor there are jigbee there are lora there is there is six low pan there there could be many many standard uh, or the through the forum which are coming along also there could be networking standard which are there in ieee or ietf defined things but as as far as the common services layer is concerned i think one m2m has done a wonderful job of defining what are the common services which do yeah. not need not be replicated so a lot of work need to be done as you rightly pointed out but at the same time we have at least one area of priority right yeah. now so that uh, we can address all the concerns yes. which are raised at this point in time i now the uh, you know i i think honorable minister is going to be here in about 10 minutes so we will take a break of about you know 5 to 10 minutes in the meantime we will arrive here okay all right yeah question i remember we were part of the group we had uh, requested what, what mr shil kumar is saying that and that note was uh, uh, sent to wpc and i think in one of the earlier forums also we had discussed this and uh, i think nfap was last time was 2011 okay and what we are looking at is at least a clarity on uh, where that spectrum would be available as and when needed if you think we don't need it today we are okay but i think we, and it should be somewhere on the existing band that 2860 because the silicon devices are already available around that they can be uh, tuned to a nearby band but if you give us a band in say 650 something i'm just giving for example say it will not serve the industry we'll have to change the whole communication modules and everything so that is one point which is i think uh, needs to be at least put in uh, pers a right perspective so that the industry has got a comfort level that okay this is where we are this is the spectrum as and when we need will be released and this is the band so that our ecosystem can be ready for that as and when the requirements are, uh, you know develop thank you very much for your question and i hope that with your question you have raised uh, you might have spoken on behalf of many in the audience So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, excuse me. Let me finish. Oh, he's answering it. Yes. No, just wait for mm -hmm. 30 seconds at least. Ah, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. Incidentally, to be brief, NFAP is under revision, and a lot of work has been done, and uh, it will take just uh, some more time to give a final touch. And while we will be giving the final touch, we shall be taking a call on all aspects of spectrum requirements. Be rest assured. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen we apologize for cutting down the session we'll have a very fast felicitation as has been mentioned earlier honorable minister of communications <coughs> shall be arriving shortly and we'll have to do the stage arrangements also so may i now request mr vipin tyagi executive director c dot to felicitate our panel members <coughs> shri vivi <coughs> singh Shri V V Singh. Honor is all Lord. Come. Shri Neeraj Kataria. Thank you very much. I wish we had more. <laughs> Shri T V Ramachandran.
श्री सुशील कुमार एंड मिस मार्गो डॉर एंड शी हेज मिस मार्गो डॉर शी इज जस्ट अफर्मिंग दैट शी हेज ऑलरेडी टेकन द मोमेंटो सो आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू थैंक हर फॉर एस्टीम प्रेजेंस इन द पैनल सो विद दिस वी वाइंड अप दिस सेशन Five minutes or so, we'll and Minister arrives. We'll uh, be here. And Mr. Rajiv Sena, actually, I'm sorry, I have uh, missed out, Mr. Rajiv Sena. Mr. Narendra Nath is not here on the stage, sir. I request you to please come on the stage. with this we wind up the session and i request all of you to be please seated in the auditorium only as the honorable minister of communications shall be arriving shortly